Welcome to my video on Rondo training. The reason I made the video was recently Rondo training has come under a little bit of criticism. I know that US Soccer recently said, I think it was last year they said, hey, we don't, not sure if we really like Rondo training because it doesn't involve shooting or doesn't have a direction to it or scoring on goals or whatever the reason is. For me, that's a very like, small reason uh, um, I don't really see any scientific backing to that reason so what I wanted to do was put my ideas and my thoughts down into a Rondo training video of why I think it's such an important training concept and the reasons why I use Rondo training on a daily basis so let's start by just looking at a bird's eye view of a game and the one thing that you're going to notice is when you see a lot of games, it's very condensed. The field is not spread out with everybody all over the field. So as you can see, that is a, a, a lot of players in a small area. And as we see with this next slide, there's 11 players in that grid and six in the other. My point for this is obviously it's starting to look like Rondo. Now from that real game visual. What I want to say about Rondo is it helps build, playing Rondo helps build the soccer, the soccer brain in small spaces. Players get used to playing in those small spaces and they start to figure out solutions to problems to keep the ball in those small spaces. Now one of the criticisms could be that it doesn't work on longer range passing and longer range vision. This can be added to Rondo in a number of ways, whether it's after four passes, then they have to look for a striker who's 30 yards up the field or a winger who's 40 yards up the field. Maybe there's some sort of other visual cues you could do with players, whether or not to hit that player or just to get the player so they're looking down the field 30 or 40 yards, even if they don't hit the pass. So there's things you could work into Rondo to also include some of the longer vision. The next thing about Rondo is the theory of gridding. There could be some uh, benefits if you're playing in the exact space that you'll be playing on. So if your target striker, your target number nine who operates best in the box is maybe combining with two center midfielders in a Rondo grid, maybe with the wingers and they're playing little ticky tacky Rondo on top of the box and that leads with a through ball after maybe five passes to finish on goal. Whatever it may be, there's all kinds of variations. Um, and there's another benefit to variations in Rondo. So if you perform the Rondo exercise in rectangles and in squares and circles and so forth, with all these variations, numbers of players, all these things, you pick up extra skill sets. You figure out how to solve problems with these different variations. So I'm a big fan of using many variations and adaptions in Rondo. Now the next part is to understand where I'm coming from, from the Rondo uh, building the soccer brain, I wanna give you a little background on experts and a little bit of the science behind why I believe in Rondo. So no matter what field you're talking about, experts have superior memory and recall in the area of their expertise. It doesn't mean they're gonna be geniuses outside the soccer field, but it means in the soccer field, their brains have developed to the point where they're, they have excellent memory, excellent recall. If you ask LeBron James, you know, what play was this in what game in what year, he'll be able to tell you because his brain is so sophisticated and so well trained in the game of basketball, he'll be able to tell you what year, what game, what play. And the reason why he could tell you what year, what game, or what play is because experts no longer rely on their conscious mind. They're able to piece together information. They call it chunking or grouping. And they group only the essential information, right? And that's done in their subconscious mind, which is millions times faster than the conscious mind. They do all this while they disregard the non-essential information at lightning speeds. Now, you're able to do this through years and years of training in the area of your expertise. And obviously you play with better players and it, it develops it even faster. And players like LeBron and players like Ronaldo and Messi, they all have different eye scanning patterns, the duration of what they look at, what they look at, 
All those are different than players who are just beginning. So the experts have the ability to anticipate uh, plays better. They know what the opponent's going to do. Superior game intelligence. All that because their mind is not getting stuck in the processing of information. They're not looking at the wrong cues. You know, a simple example is when you're a defender, hey, they tell you, you know, if you look at the ball, it's probably not that good. The guy's probably going to get by you. If you look at somebody maybe three inches below their navel, the center of gravity doesn't lie. So an experienced player doesn't have to say that to themselves. They automatically focus in on the essential cues while disregarding the non-essential cues. All this has a meaning to it. What I'm telling you is that this is the type of thing that Rondo builds in small areas. It builds the soccer player's um, brain, their soccer IQ in small areas to keep the ball and to solve problems. Now, the difference is though, it's not like something like chess where you just see a chess board and you memorize the pieces. Soccer, other sports are a fluid game and they don't rely just on memory. So to become a superior athlete in a fluid game, you have to be able to, yes, you're going to have memories, but you have to be able to perform in a fluid moving state. And basically, that's the constant processing of information and you are cognitively flexible. So you're able to solve problems in real time. And again, a lot of that is your subconscious mind and this is accomplished through constant, constant training and years of years of training in the proper environments. Here's a, here's a little quote about Le, LeBron James and his game intelligence. And basically what it's saying is he takes in everything, right? And as he takes in everything, then he's able to focus in on certain elements. And you can see this in Rondo. You take in everything and you notice if there's a split between the defenders or where the space is. You're able to focus in on that element while taking in the whole entire game and then you could exploit or you could take advantage of that one element that you noticed. And again, this is being cognitively flexible in a fluid, ever-changing environment. And the other thing is that elite, elite athletes, they have an inner GPS. They know exactly where they are on the field. They know where their opponents are. They see everything virtually as one structure. So when LeBron James is playing basketball, he knows it's five on five. So he sees himself as part of that five on five game and he knows where every piece of that puzzle is at all times. So, and that is in a constant, fluid, moving environment. And they are so good, they know what the likelihood, the anticipation of certain things happening or not happening and it's really an amazing thing. And again, this is something that takes years of training. But with Rondo training, the reason why I so much believe in the Rondo training is because it gives you that nonstop repetition in a small area where you could find those solutions, figure out those body positions, see yourself as part of that structure in that area. Know where every player is as you develop that skill set. That's why I personally think that Rondo training is so, so very important, whether or not it has going to goal or whether it doesn't go to goal. So the next, say, five minutes or so are just a, uh, this is a constant running video of all different, different types of Rondos, different variations of Rondo training. And the reality is that all these different types of Rondo training is building their soccer brain. I'm programming them by using all these different rondo training methods for them to figure out body positioning, to, for them to figure, figure out options on the ball, to think two steps ahead at all times. They have to understand what the structure that they're in right now and how to be the most successful in that structure. It's a different experience for the two guys in the middle of this than it is for the outside players. So it's important that players get to train in all these different positions in the, in the Rondo exercise. Don't just have one person play on the outside the whole time. Um, position specific Rondo stuff. I think it's position specific is fine, even though I don't think um, 
you know, all the time it translates to 100%, but the example I gave you of the number nine and maybe some of the, the center mids and maybe a winger or so playing in the specific areas that they would be in on top of the box has some real benefit. Um, again, though, I really think the benefit is the fluidity and figuring out solutions, body shapes, thinking ahead, anticipating, building that brain in small spaces because when when you try to there is no there is no exercise that that will anticipate the, the game specifically like you can't train every single possibility in a soccer game and make an exercise for it so i love the fact that that rondo is this fluid game that can apply to all different parts of the real soccer game you can apply this in any part of the field you can apply these touches on the ball, whether you know, you're know you in your defensive third, whether you're in the middle third, the attacking third, it just doesn't matter. So for me, this is a game, this is a training method that just can't be denied, whether or not they're shooting or not involved. So hopefully some of that stuff makes sense to you, but that's some of the, the thinking behind why I use Rondo training on a regular basis. So I'm gonna let this video run now. You probably have another five minutes of, of different Rondo variations could always tune into my channel. I have a million Rondo videos on there. And um, hope you enjoy it. Take care.